Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody, to another Ithaca Club eSports match here. I am Cormac, as always, or Robin Fox, depending on what you want to call me. And uh, I have a guest with me. Hi again, everyone. My name is Austin, or Union Thunder, depending on what you'd like to call me. Uh, Cormac and I are back for the spring 2023 NECC season. Uh, we're kicking things off with Ithaca College Blue Team versus Murray State Blue, so the Battle of the Blue tonight. Uh, definitely very excited to get started off. We, if we haven't talked to any of you out there, Happy New Year. Uh, happy February, for that matter. But uh, we're going to be getting started in just a little bit. Welcome back. Wow, look at you with all these lovely greetings. <laughs> um, yeah, it feels great to be back. Uh, as you may have noticed, if you watched some of our broadcasts last season, excuse me, um, I'm in the process of updating some of our graphics, just trying to make things look a little nicer around here. Um, so you may notice throughout the course of this season some things changing around. But yeah, so on the docket today, our, our blue team is going to be playing first here at uh, 7, which is now, but you know how these things go uh, in esports. It's always a few minute delay here and there. Um, and they're going to be going up against Murray State Blue here, as you can see on these just, you know, if you, if you were to ask me just these lovely new graphics, I know I'm biased, but man, is that is that incredible. Uh, I know that Austin has done a little research on this team while I was making the graphics, so if you want to share what you found out about them. Sure. Well, before that, one thing I would like to mention to everyone out there listening is Cormac here was recently elected as the broadcast coordinator oh. for Ithaca Esports. Oh, you shouldn't have. So um, if y'all want to go and chat and wish him a little congratulations there, uh, he will be heading the entire esports club's broadcasts, um, uh, managing all that and just lots of stuff that I don't understand. I just sit here with the mic. Uh, but congratulations, Cormac. Wow, thank you. I, I appreciate you saying that. But of course, you have done your research. I think it's time to uh, share that with all the lovely uh, listeners or viewers. Alrighty, so Murray State is a college in Kentucky. Um, normally, uh, at least last season, Ithaca would not have played a team in Kentucky, but um, Ithaca did uh, have some divisional change. So the blue team here last year was in the Emergence Division. So the NECC splits into four skill level divisions. The Emergence uh, was the third skill level from the top. Um, they had a little bit of a rough season, though. Uh, Ithaca went, Ithaca Blue went two and six. They did not qualify for the playoffs. Uh, so this year they have been moved down to the Navigators Division, uh, which is the same division that my t team, IC Gold, is uh, is playing in. Now we are in the same skill level division, but there's different regions. So. My team on gold, we are staying in the Northeast Division, but IC Blue, I think in an effort to not have the IC teams play each other, uh, is in the Midwest Division. So Murray State is in Kentucky. Uh, they have about double the number of students as Ithaca College, and last year they were also in the Emergence Division, which was the, uh, the third division uh, where IC Blue was last year. And they went three and five. They did qualify for the playoffs. I was not able to find the information about how they did. Uh, but it looks like most of their roster is coming back uh, for this spring season. Uh, they have a little bit of skill variation. They have some diamonds, a gold, and a champ uh, based on their current 3v3 rankings. Um, one thing I would like to note is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this name, but I think it's it's Geyser, G-Y-Z-R. Uh, in the research I was doing, does seem to be a very strong defensive player. Uh, his save percentage um, compared to goals and assists was confidently stronger than uh, most of his teammates and uh, most of IC as well. So uh, if he's in any of these games, that's going to be someone to look out for. And I think I've just gotten word that we will be starting soon here. So getting ready for this match. Just a few moments here are our players. They're just loading into the lobby, and I think we are going to get started. And, uh, of course, let us know here if um, our audio levels need some adjusting, because I know we've had some changes, but already starting off strong here is Wisley with a goal 
in just the first few seconds. For those of you who need a refresher, Wisley, also known as Lucas, is a computer science major in the class of 2026 here at Ithaca College. Um, and that computer science knowledge must be correlating to Rocket League a little bit because uh, only 10 seconds in, but I see already up one, a great start for Ithaca. Uh, Peter going for an aerial there, but a good save from Geyser. There's that defense that, I, that we might be looking for. Um, but it looks like the, uh, well, what's this team called? The Murray State's defense is a little <laughs> bit all over the place. Um, Ithaca is getting some good pressure and not looking too scared there. Ithaca is just moving along. Looks like they have not missed a beat. And Tommy's going to hit the crossbar Ooh. almost. And Weasley oh. with his second of the night. Only 39 seconds in. Weasley there with the follow-up. And uh, again, I think some of these players are uh, de-rusting right now, if you want to say. And I think it's fair to say that uh, some of us on the broadcasting end might also be de-rusting. I mentioned the audio levels there. I uh, had the game muted by accident. I apologize for that. And I uh, hope uh, our viewers will excuse me if I turn off chat uh, after this game because I realize I've left it on. But hey, that's uh, that's what the beginning of the season is about, both for the broadcasting side and the players. Uh, just getting the rust off. That was a close look there for Ithaca, but just goes wide. Now, something to note is this semester's IC Blue team is the same roster as the fall. Um, on gold, we uh, JoJo, who is one of the players on our team, he transferred, so he is no longer eligible to play on our team. Uh, but we will be playing with Roberto instead. You'll get to see him play in the next game. Uh, but this is the same IC team that you know, so they've been practicing or something, but they, they don't look like they're having any trouble playing with each other just like they were before. Already 2-0 with really good pressure, not really giving Murray State any room to yeah, it seems like Murray's kind of just been boxed into the orange half of the field here. That one is going to just drizzle out right in front of the goal, but nobody was there to finish it off. Two Murray players had to rush back and barely just clear that one to safety. It's a great touch here from Peter Wiggin, otherwise known as Elliot, the strong captain of this team here, the highest ranked player among them. And Lizzo here is going to take it up the side. Again, it seems like Murray's just stuck on defense. Maybe. Here's a chance to get out and change things, but again, a Ithaca player is there to hit it back upfield. It is worth noting that when we look at the average ranks of these teams, Ithaca's ranking from champ one to champ two, uh, with Elliott actually hitting grand champ award level. Um, but the, the Murray State ranks are mostly in the diamond range uh, with one champ, uh, which is Indy over there. Um, but rank doesn't mean everything. As we can see, Sherlock, only a Diamond 3 Division 3, lower rank than all three Ithaca players, is able to put that one in with a bounce shot under Peter and over Weasley. This game is just getting started. Yeah, that one was tough for Ithaca there. It was sloppy. It didn't look great. Uh, because I've forgotten to turn chat off, you can see the whoops there from Peter. Uh, he knows that he did not get the best touch in front of his own net. When you're in that position, you have to be more careful with how you hit the ball and Wizley there was just caught out of position. And now Murray's on the board, it could happen again. Peter awkward in front of the net, able to get a good 50 this time and keep Ithaca away from two awkward goals. Again, those ranks don't always mean everything. If anyone has been following RLCS, there have been some upsets there, but Ithaca not missing a beat. Tommy is gonna put one in to make it 3-1. I don't think that was more than 30 or so seconds after uh, Murray came in with that one goal. Uh, giving IC a very comfortable two-goal lead. They'll just try, need to try and keep it. Yeah, and you talked about the RLCS. There are a lot of upsets, and Ithaca is trying to not face the same fate. But things have been exciting over in the professional leagues for anyone following. Good touch there from Peter into the corner. It seems like he's trying to redeem himself after the bad touch he had in front of the box that led to a very singular goal. Speaking about touches, there's one floating down off the side right into the corner and Wisley is there to finish it off. And it looks like from Murray, just a bit slow to the touch and then nobody was up. When that ball is skipping off the corner towards your net, somebody's got to go for it or else that will surely be a goal and it is 4-1 now in game one for Ithaca. Third, giving him a hat-trick this game 
I know Tommy has one. I don't think Peter got one. So uh, a great, great game from Weasley and a great game from all the other players here. Um, maybe some evidence of some good rest over the break when they weren't playing too much and just getting back on the field now. Could also be evidence of the new division that they're in. They are in a division that will hopefully align better with their skill level. And there is Peter with his first goal. We have at least one goal from all three of the team members here in a 5-1 lead with just over a minute remaining. Yeah, that one was just a snipe there from midfield. Peter had the awareness and you look at Peter's rank, he's the highest ranked player on this team, as I've said, and we keep hammering it home about rank, but sometimes skill level isn't all just flashy mechanics, it's that game sense, that awareness. A lot of players uh, of lower ranks might not notice that the net is open there and just go for a long shot like Peter did, so great mind for the game here, and it's going to put them up by four, under a minute left, and again, we are talking about ranks, and it seems like with this lead and this bombastic start to the first game, uh, our icy blue squad here is saying, put us back where we belong. I know we didn't play well last season, but surely we can just fly through the opposition down here. It is worth noting that Elliot, Peter Wiggin, the captain of the blue team, has over 2 million channel points on Rocket League Twitch, something he had to explain to me. Uh, but for those of you who know what that is, is evidence that he watches plenty of Rocket League on Twitch and maybe watching some of those professional plays uh, has really been helping him get that game sense up. Elliot has had a great game as Weasley puts in his fourth of the game. I was going to say of the night, but just this game, um, nine seconds left and Ithaca just twisting the knife a little bit into Murray State, a five goal lead. It looks like this game is easily over for him. Yeah, Ithaca just doesn't want to stop this momentum going into game two here and that was an unfortunate miss off the backboard from the Murray State player and they will be punished. That is an impressive stat about the channel points there and perhaps even more impressive shooting from Ithaca and they'll go up one game in the series here. Very impressive game from Ithaca. Really exciting to see such dominant performance from Ithaca. Um, again, they, they got a little challenged last semester when they were placed in a uh, placed in a division that was probably a little bit higher than uh, they could compete. I did talk to Elliot the other day when we were registering for the season, and he was saying that they really just had s some bad games and felt like they could keep up, but uh, a lot of the placement is based off of previous records. So it looks like the NACC put them in the Navigators division here, and we'll see if they can continue to keep up this pace as we begin game two in just a moment. All oh, one second here. Sorry about that, folks. Again, just uh, brushing off the dust here, broadcast. All right, going into game two, it looks like Icy already has great pressure with a shot from Tommy. Peter with a great demolition. Peter staying back on defense. Great wall and corner defense there. Weasley is going to move into the corner to try to get a clear, but a demolition. But Peter is there to move it forward. I'm so sorry about that. I promise I will get better. It's been a little bit. Uh, but first 30 seconds of that game. Maybe cut off the broadcast, but uh, out of all the 30 seconds so far of this series to miss, at the beginning of this game would be the best has not been too much action so far, but looks like a card change there uh, from one of the Murray State players. And for anyone who plays Rocket League, you know that card doesn't really uh, tangibly affect your skill level, but it can definitely affect the mentality. You see that player getting the assist there for Sherlock to put it in, and quite the change of momentum here. Murray State now has the lead for the first time in the series. This Sherlock play that we're seeing who scored that goal M3 Division 3, just a few good games away from being ranked champion, which is where most of our IC players fall. Weasley is going to take this up, do a little bit of a flick, and it hits the crossbar. A great shot from Weasley. Tommy going for the rebound, but will miss, unfortunately. Gravy's going to go for a clear. Weasley dangles around Peter. I'm not sure if that was a miscommunication from IC, um, but nothing to fret about as IC gets shot after shot and scores. IC ties it at one. 
pressure on net from Tommy, and it's just a little bit of a dinker, but still the Murray State player there, Gravy, talking about the car change, did not have the speed to get to that one, and IC is going to tie it at one here. Off the kickoff, Tommy's trying to go off the wall. Remain central, and it's smart of Peter there to stay back, but it gives Murray State a lot of space here to start the attack. Obviously, again, just keeping these 50s here at midfield, and I'll say it once, I'll say it twice, I'll say it again. Those midfield 50s are what wins or loses you a game with Rocket League, and Wisley here is trying to get a victory for Ithaca, and it seems like nobody back there for Murray. I'm not sure what happened. Offense from Weasley tonight is really impressive. We're only, what, six and a half minutes into gameplay here, and Weasley already has six goals um, and shows no signs of letting up. Uh, Ithaca is just on fire tonight. Um, they only got a couple wins last season. I think one of them might have been a forfeit. So Ithaca in really good shape here, playing some good defense. Peter with a good clear. Tommy is in a rule one in the Murray State net, so it's a 2v2. We'll see which team is a better 2v2 squad here. Yeah, that is quite the interesting scenario. That one there, barely saved out by Peter. But, wait, was he in the rule? Did he come back, or is a different player in the rule? Tommy is in, Tommy's the, in the rule. My apologies. Uh, still in net there. That is not the most common spot to find yourself face-to-face, -face, literally, with another player. But it has happened, and you see the respect that these teams have for each other, that they're continuing the rule one. And if you're not sure what we're talking about when we're saying that, of course, a rule one, I believe it happened once last season, but I'll explain it again for anyone who's new. Uh, a rule one in Rocket League is when two players uh, hit into each other with the noses of their car and they drive directly forward and they kind of stop each other's movement. And it is uh, customary, or I should say it is deemed polite or correct in the uh, unspoken rules of the game to continue driving straight forward and remain in that headlock uh, until another goal happens or something breaks it up. As you see, that this is happening here and it's sort of a funny occurrence and you wonder, well this can't really be helping uh, competitively, but you'd be surprised at how many teams will actually do this in the professional leagues and the RLCS too. It just goes to show you uh, how strong the culture here of Rocket League is. Two things to note about a rule one. The first is it is sometimes interesting to look at the primary game stats at the end of the game. Um, as a lot of the time during a rule one, you're technically getting multiple hundreds of bumps against the other car. So it can sometimes be funny to look at those stats. We'll see if we can grab those stats for you at the end of this game. And the other note is um, for any very old time Rocket League players, or if you go online, look at Reddit, there are actually disagreements about what rule one is. So some older players believe that the first rule of Rocket League is actually that when the clock hits zero seconds, you keep the ball up under all circumstances, while a lot of newer players believe that rule one is the headlock. As we can see, great HD quality right here. Tommy's still stuck in net for probably half the game now. Yeah. It's just been a 2v2 deadlock. I mean, watching that headlock there was uh, sort of like watching a nature documentary, but Wisley here into the corner, and... Just a few seconds ago, I believe Peter might have had an open net from midfield. And respect to Sherlock, the Murray player stuck in net to not even attempt to save it if it was on target. But just goes to show you the dedication those players have to the rule one. Peter here trying to air dribble, gets it past one. But Indy onto the side, and that might just be a shot on target, and it is. Wisley there will capitalize on the open net. Not the best touch here from Indy. And Wisley can punish, and I guess chat is still on. <laughs> I know we laughed about that rule one a lot, but for Murray State, they are down a game, and they were only down one goal, and the player they had locked in the rule one was Sherlock. Like we said, the second highest ranked player on their team, and scoring the only Murray State goal this game, and the second one, 11 seconds left. This will be a challenging comeback for Murray State, but as we can see, having Sherlock locked up in that rule one for two or so minutes was really taking a toll on the Murray State team. They're only going to have 11 seconds to try to tie this one up. Yeah, but a lot here can happen in 11 seconds. You saw Sherlock there was kind of tired of having to put the controller down. He took matters into his own hands. Here's a chance to tie it up. A miss off the backboard and Gravy can't quite convert. That could have been the chance for Murray to get back into this game. 
off of the mistake from Peter, but just can't quite get the angle. And they're going to need one last attempt here. Maybe it's going to go in. Tommy, with a heroic save on the goal line, going to keep that one out. And Ithaca will kill the ball going up 2-0 in the series. Definitely a sigh of relief from the Ithaca team there. Murray State is showing that they can still put up a fight, and I, I do have to think if Sherlock hadn't been locked in that rule one for a lot of that game, this game may not have gone so easily Ithaca's way. Um, even on that last play, Tommy had to make a last-ditch effort save in order to keep that ball out of the net, but nonetheless, Ithaca is up two games to none. They are going to look for the sweep as we move into game three. Murray State readied up immediately, so they, they seem ready to go. In all honesty, even though they lost that game, they definitely had the momentum at the end, so they might just want to get right back into this and keep the momentum going. And it looks like we are just about ready for game three. Cormac, have we uh, taken a look at the, the chat? Yeah, I think, um, I think I fixed the chat. I think I have uh, fixed many things, or I guess active mutators are on. I'm not sure what's happening. But <laughs> all I know is that uh, we are getting into our game three here. Right off the bat, Murray State is having some good pressure and amazing save from Weasley. Uh, it looks like Murray State actually had a little bit of a collision when they were going for that first shot, but nonetheless, it almost got by Ithaca. Weasley had a very, very close save, but... On the next shot, Gravy will score. Uh, no save for Ithaca there. A great touch, uh, a really a perfect arc to get into that side of the net. Tommy was in net, but I don't think anyone, I certainly wasn't, <laughs> was expecting the shot to just arc perfectly into the far side of the net. Definitely a surprise for Ithaca. Again, Murray State is not letting up. They are down two games to none, but they are putting some good pressure on as Gravy goes for another one. And Sherlock will make it 2-0, 30 seconds in to this possible elimination game. Yeah, another card change there for Gravy, and it might be paying off for him, because that was a beautiful play there, as simple as you like, but as effective as you like. The air dribble there into the 50, giving it to Sherlock in front of the net, and quite the energetic beginning here for Murray State. They're trying to get three off the kickoff, but Peter's going to control this one. And I was going to say when they're up one, this is how game two started, and then things went south with the rule one. But Murray is able to break the court, the curse, excuse me, and go up two goals to zero uh, for the first time in this series. And maybe they can continue it. But here's an attacking opportunity for Tommy taking away into the corner. Here, Ithaca here, it's definitely important not to panic. They know their game. This first game was, I think, 6-1 to one or 7-1 to one final score. Ithaca knows that they can beat Murray very comfortably. If they try to panic, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to lead to more mistakes, and that's kind of what happened on those first two goals. It was just little mistakes. If Ithaca can just stick to their game here, um, they've been able to beat Murray State twice. Uh, they just can't let this little bit of momentum Murray is getting to get ahead of them but Murray is not letting up. Indy getting another shot. Ithaca has definitely been on defense for a good portion of this game, but a good push from Weasley who's gonna get into the offensive zone and Peter will go for the aerial and finish it to make this a one goal game. Yeah, that was a uh, good 50 there from Weasley and Gravy there just can't get up in time. I think it was a little bit of a double commit for Murray or at least two players were tangled up on top of each other and just not the positioning that you're looking for. Ithaca is able to cut the lead here in half, but it's still going to be an uphill battle for them. Again, like Austin was saying, they know that they can win, so it's just about converting that confidence into results. Once again, Weasley had a great 50 there. I know I said this before, but Weasley is having an incredible game tonight. I think six or seven goals, some great 50s, and as I say, it looks like he wasn't able to tap it in. Uh, but Tommy, um, who has been no one to laugh at tonight either, playing an amazing game along with the rest of the team, comes up with a great play, positioning, right place, right time, and we have a tie game. Yeah, I, I think a uh, great play might have been a strong term for what I just watched there. You saw that Tommy got the touch in the corner and that one kind of just floated. I think it might have pinged off of two Murray State players and found its way into the net. Not going to be one for the highlight reel, but a goal is a goal all the same and it's now tied at two. And if you're Murray, you got to be 
uh, angry at yourself for that one. It was not the best goal to give up, and now suddenly Ithaca has weaseled their way back into this game. Just about half of it left, and if you're Murray, you're thinking, was that the goal that uh, gets us swept here in this series? Both teams keeping up the pressure here. I'm seeing a lot of strong offense both directions here. A great pinch from Murray. It's going to get the ball all the way up, but Peter is going to turn it around right away. An amazing read from Peter off the wall, but unfortunately can't get that ceiling um, shot to work. Uh, Tommy is going to put one off the post. Almost. I thought I thought they had it there, um, but Murray's going to come back. Gravy with a great touch, but Weasley keeping up his amazing game with a great, great save. Weasley's going to keep the pressure up with an aerial demo, something like that, um, as it, it tries to turn this game in their favor. Yeah, and if you ask me, it looks like Ithaca has been in control for most of this game. They had a little bit of a shaky start. They let Murray in a little bit too often, but now the momentum is swinging in their favor here. Sherlock. Trying to get more than one touch in the air, but he can't. And he's there to pick up. But again, it just hasn't looked like Ithaca has felt too threatened in their defensive half for the past minute or so. And that might have been the most genius or the most accidental play of all time. Regardless, it results in a goal for Ithaca. Peter there gets the touch and Tommy doesn't make contact, but it just rolls right in. Looks like Sherlock, who has really been the MVP for Murray State tonight, just missed that. Probably a misestimate on the jump, or just wasn't expecting Peter to shoot it. Um, in all honesty, I don't know if anyone was expecting Peter to shoot it. It was a long shot, it was slow, and there was a lot of people in the way, uh, but it just went right through. Peter's going to go for another one here with a great 50 on the aerial, probably centered as Weasley's going to center it, but Sherlock will get this save and not let it pick at that fourth one just yet. Uh, Murray State is going all out now Ooh. with a great demo, and they're going to try to put one in as a last chance to save this series. Again, they are down two games to none. Ithaca wins this, it is all over. Yeah, and it was a really great look there from Murray State, but I think Ravy needed to shoot that. The best touch he could get was a little awkward and a little too light. That could be a whiff there. And I think Peter tried to get the back whip to put it away. Surely that was a goal, but no, Tommy is denied by an awkwardly flipping defender. And Murray State somehow survives what was quite the turn of events here. They're trying to march down the other end, tie this game up. They're going to need something fast here. That whiff from Indy does not help. Sherlock, the time is just ticking down, and it could be over. It's up in the corner. Another devastating whiff, and that series is going to be over here. Great game from Ithaca. Murray State, again, showing that they are a good team. Uh, the second and third game were both 3-2, one-goal games. Uh, really incredible game to see. It's great to see Ithaca come out on top. I know they had a rough season last uh, year, but now they are getting off really, really, really well. Three wins in a row for their season opener. That is a sweep, and that will put them up 1-0. Looks like IC Blue might be trying to make a playoff run. I know we're seven games before we can even consider that, but um, really incredible play from Ithaca, sticking to their game, not letting the pressure from Murray get to them. Uh, Cormac, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I thought Ithaca looked absolutely dominant in that game, very strong. There were a few hiccups, like at the beginning of game three there, where they went two down, but it just shows you the resolve and the confidence that they had in themselves and their teammates to get back into that game after going down by two. And I don't think Murray played badly. I think it was just obvious who the better team was, and maybe part of that was because our blue squad uh, changed divisions here. Maybe uh, they get a little overconfident. I hope not, but after that 3-0 sweep, uh, you got to be thinking to yourselves, how far can we go? Definitely not much to add there. Uh, great game to watch, great game to cast, and I hope for Ithaca a great game to play. I am going to have to head out now. Um, I see Gold is playing our game at 8 p.m. tonight. I believe Cormac will be streaming um, solo for that one. I think I will be. I'm not sure if I could uh, land a, a co-commentator here, but 
uh, as you can see on the graphic, our gold team will be playing at eight here against Thomas College Red. And uh, I wish you luck. Hopefully, you can bring home two sweeps for uh, for Ithaca tonight. How are you feeling about the upcoming game? I'm I'm feeling good. I'm optimistic. It's always interesting going into the season. We don't know what our division looks like. Partway into the season, you can sort of look at the records and you can kind of tell who's good and who's not. But I have zero insights on who we're playing. Um, and with our our new team, uh, we just we haven't had a lot of time to play together. Not that I think we won't get there, but um, it'll definitely be some some good time to get to know each other's playing styles. Um, Nate and or Roberto, if either of you are watching, uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. But uh, hopefully, we'll we'll bring home another win for for Ithaca tonight. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think we will have a little break in the broadcast coming up. Not quite yet. Uh, I'll give you all a fair goodbye in just a few moments here. But again, we will be taking a break in between uh, our matches, but we will be kicking off again at 8 p.m. for our gold match featuring uh, my compatriot Austin here, uh, stepping down from the mic and stepping onto the pitch. And again, that will be happening at 8 p.m., so don't go anywhere. But I think we might just uh, have to say goodbye for now. Any last words? Great game as uh, your great first game to stream as broadcast coordinator. I'm loving these new graphics. It looks like Elliot is liking them in the chat as well. Um, I'm sure that we are all really excited to see where broadcasting goes this semester. Uh, but with that said, I will see all of you on the pitch. Adios. Make sure to uh, tune in in half an hour, and we'll see you then.